Hi, this is Marissa from Flux VFX, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how we created one of the scenes in our stop motion After Effects template. Uh, you can see the link in the description to our template. In the description, we also have a link to the Polaroid textures that we use in the project. Uh, those are free. You can use them to follow along with this tutorial or use them however you see fit. So let's go ahead and get started by jumping into After Effects, and we're going to import our Polaroid frames and it is a Photoshop file that has several layers so you want to select import as composition retain layer sizes and we want to create a composition that is the exact size of our frames so to do that we're going to select our Polaroid frame layers so we have frame uh, 4, 3, 2, 1 we're going to select those and we're going to drag them to this uh, composition button at the bottom of our project panel and we'll have a new window pop up and you want to create a single composition. You want to make sure that's selected and our options are still duration. Uh, the duration of each layer is going to be four frames and we do want to check the sequence layers option and don't overlap them. We want them just to be sequenced uh, in the timeline and click OK. So now we have a composition that has our frame textures and we want to actually loop this to make it a lot longer. Another thing you might uh, want to consider is this script called the Loop Maker. And this script is actually going to help us create this looping texture over our Polaroid frame. You can create that without the script, um, but it actually will make things go a lot faster if you do get it. Let's go ahead and rename this composition. If we go to our project panel, you can uh, hit return with that comp selected and we're just going to name this frames. So our next step is to pre-comp this frames composition so that we can run our uh, loop maker script. So we're going to select our frames comp and drag it into the drag it to the comp button and this will pre-comp into another composition that's now called frames 2. Let's right click on that tab and we want to go to our composition settings and change the duration. We're going to make this a little longer so we're going to just make it a minute. And if we zoom out you'll see that our frames layer is teeny, teeny, tiny. Uh, so we want to loop this composition uh, by going to our Loop Maker script. So we'll go to Window and select the Loop Maker, which I already have installed. We're going to uncheck the Use Blend effect. And for our dissolve length, we're, we're going to make it really tiny. We're going to make it three and click Loop. We can close that panel and we can drag this layer out. So now this will be looping for the entire length of this composition. So now let's rename this comp and we're going to name it uh, frame 01 and click OK. Now what we want to do is create a mat for our image to uh, see through this frame because some of these uh, Photoshop layers, like I said, they are generally the same size, but you can see at the top that this one is a little short. So if we just drag our video or our photo underneath this layer, it's going to show through on that edge and we, we don't want to see that. To create shape layer, we'll just click on our uh, rectangle tool up here. And it can be any color. And we want to drag that underneath our looped composition. And if you hit return, on your keyboard and we'll just name that Matt. So now let's import uh, the video that we want to use. So we go to project panel and to import, there's several ways you can import stuff into After Effects. And one of the ways is just to double click inside uh, an empty space in the project panel. I'm going to select my video I want to use, click open. So now I can drag this into the timeline. And we're going to put this under our matte layer. Then we're going to go to our toggles and switches go to our track mat and we're going to select alpha mat. Then I'm going to hit S on my keyboard to scale this up a little bit or a lot. Here we go. And so another thing we want to do is these frames, they're a little bit flat. And if you're familiar with the way real Polaroids look, they actually have, they actually are a little bit thick. They're not completely flat. And this image looks a little bit flat to me. So, so what I want to do is right click on the frames, the looping frames layer, and we want to go to layer styles, bevel and emboss. And we want this bevel to be very, very subtle. We don't want it to 
to overdo it. So we're going to go to the shadow opacity and we're going to bring that down a lot. I'm going to go to the size and bring that down to two and we're going to soften this up. And I know it's barely visible, but it does make a little bit of a difference. And I think bevels for the most part they just look really cheesy if you don't use them right. And so another effect that I used in the template was a vignette on this image. So what we're going to do is go to layer, we're going to do an adjustment layer, and then we'll go to our little shape tools here and we'll select the ellipse tool and then just double click on that ellipse and it will create an ellipse as a mask on this uh, adjustment layer and we want to reshape this mask. There we go. All right, and we'll go to our effects and presets and we'll select fast blur. Make sure their repeat edge pixels is selected. I'm going to move that up and that looks like the opposite of what we should be doing and it is. So if we go to our mask in our adjustment layer and change this mode to subtract and move this adjustment layer under the frames layer because we don't want our frames to look blurry. And then in our mask properties, we want to adjust the feather. We want to feather this a little so that edge is a little bit softer. And uh, with our adjustment layer selected, we'll also apply, I use brightness contrast to make uh, this vignette around the edges a little bit darker. And next we're going to add one more adjustment layer and make sure that's underneath our frames. And we're going to use the exposure effect and we're going to wiggle this exposure. We're going to apply a wiggle expression. So we're going to hold down the Alt or Option key while clicking on the stopwatch for exposure. I'm going to type wiggle three comma point five. I'm going to put a parentheses around those numbers. And then this is going to create a, a subtle wi wiggling uh, color corrections. And it's just one of our tools and effects that we're using to uh, make it look like a fake stop motion video. Now that we have one frame done, we're going to go to our project panel and select that frame composition and hit control or command D uh, two more times. Double click to open the frame 02 comp. And as you can see, it looks just like our frame 01 uh, composition. So we want to change that up a little bit. And we're going to, uh, by selecting our video layer, I'm going to move that position over. We're going to select our frames, our looping frames comp, and we're going to adjust when it starts. We're going to start a little bit earlier. And we're going to do this in our other frame also. So that way when all the frames are being shown together, they don't all have that same looping. They don't, all the looping isn't like playing at the same time. So there's a little bit of a variation in that as well to make it just look a little bit different. I'm going to scale this up a little bit more. There we go. Now it's time to create our animation. So let's go to composition, create a new comp. We're going to use the HD 1080 preset. I'm going to rename this final. Click OK. And before we get started, we'll create a background. Uh, if you go to your uh, shape tools here, select the rectangle tool and then just double click on it. We're going to make this a 3D layer. And let's hit return on our keyboard with that layer selected and change the name to background. Let's select our frame compositions from the project panel and just drag them into our comp. All right, so we want frame 01 to be in front. So I'm gonna put these in order and then I'm going to um, select these and scale them down. You know, they're a little bit too big. And I want to make a little more adjustments to this frame. The second frame, we're going to scale that up a little more. 
let's go back to our final there we go and we want to make these 3d so if you remember for our final animation our frames uh, move in from off camera they could sort of gather together into this stack and then two of the frames sort of pop out from the edges and then they move back into a stack so what we want to do first is create that stack so we'll leave layer number one where it is and we'll move layer number two under and sort of stack them so now to make this look like a uh, it's stacked in 3d space we actually need to move these layers let's go to our comp viewer go to two views horizontal go into our second view and select frame two and three and drag on this z axis arrow move these guys back and then select frame three let's zoom in here and move them back a little and if we go back to our first view you can see that they have disappeared behind our background so we're going to move our background layer back a little further and then just uh, click and drag on any of the edges to make it bigger there we go so we have a stack with three of our layers but we want it to have a, a deeper stack so we actually want to create more photos in this stack so what we're going to do is select um, our frames here in the timeline and hit Control or Command D. Then we're going to drag those guys down and we're going to right click on, on these label colors. We're going to change the color to purple. And that's going to help us distinguish which layers are going to sort of stay in place and then which ones are going to be animated. Okay, so let's go back to our two views. And what we're going to do is with these purple labeled layers selected, we're going to move, oh, we're going to move those guys. So whether, let's zoom in here. They're kind of in between the layers, the layers that we have. Like right there. That's good. And so now I'm just going to select some of these layers and vary their positions. So that way you can sort of see that it's it's a stack. They're not going to be completely in a straight line. We want to be able to see a little variation in their position. And they're all 3D, so let's add a camera. It's a new camera. And this uh, 35 millimeter uh, preset is fine for us, and we'll click OK. And next we'll want to go to layer, new, light. We'll add a spotlight. we we'll just move our intensity up to like 100. We do want it to cast shadows. Click OK. I'm going to bring this light out a little further back. And we also want, uh, we want these frames to cast shadows and you usually have to turn that on manually. So we'll select our frame layers, uh, twirl down to the material options and click on cast shadows to turn those on. And I'm going to go back to my light options and we're going to change that shadow darkness. I think it's a little too harsh. So we make it about like 40 or 35. We want it to be a little bit subtle. We don't want it to be overwhelming. All right, so let's get started with animating our frames. So we're going to uh, zoom in here a little. We're going to create a keyframe on all of our frame layers, right around here, right around 16 frames. So we're gonna select our layers, hit P on our keyboard to bring up our position properties. Click on the stopwatch to create keyframes. And then we'll uh, go back to the beginning of our timeline and we're going to move all of these off screen uh, in different positions. So we'll start frame number three, one of the purple ones, and we'll move it to the right. I mean, sorry, to the left. And that one to the right, move this one up. Let's zoom out here so we can see what we're doing. I'm gonna move that up from the corner there we go. So now we're going to uh, click and drag to select all of our keyframes. And we're just going to, uh, let's see, let's right click and go to keyframe assistant and go to easy ease. Okay, so let's play this back. See what that looks like. Whoa. Here we go. 
Now I think that's just a little too fast, so we're going to click and drag to select our second set of keyframes and just move them a little bit. There we go. Okay, so as soon as we make uh, our photos make this stack, we want two of our frames, our frame two and frame three, to uh, move out, sort of fan out. So we're going to take frame two and we're going to, let's see, right around here. We'll go a few frames down, like, uh, one, two, like five, and we'll create another keyframe here for both of these layers, frame two and three. And then we'll go down a little bit more, right about here, and we'll select frame two, and move it out to the right, and move frame three to the left. Okay, if we play that back. So we want that to happen a little bit sooner. This sort of, sort of sits there a little too long. So let's play that back again. And when these frames move out, sort of fan out to the left and right, we also want them to rotate. So we'll select frame two and three and hit R on our keyboard to bring up our rotation properties. We'll click the stopwatch for the Z rotation. And then if you want to hit U on your keyboard to see the rest of those keyframes, uh, we want to start at zero. Then we're going to move to the next position keyframe and we want to rotate these guys a little. So make that about five, and the other one will be probably about minus, minus seven. That's good. There we go. So to add, we do want to add a little bit of a wiggle to all of the frames rotation. Uh, it just gives it a little bit more movement and sort of sells that stop motion-y look we're going for. So what we're going to do is uh, select our purple frames, which are creating our photo stack. We're going to hit R on our keyboard to bring up our rotation properties. We're going to go to frame one and make that Z rotation like minus one. Make this frame Z rotation two. And make frame three maybe positive one, just one. And then we're going to move up to about six seconds. We're going to create Whoops, we forgot to create keyframes. So we're going to click the stopwatch for the Z rotation, then we're going to move forward around six seconds. And, oh, we did that wrong. We'll get that fixed. Then we'll create another keyframe for these. So this is minus one, this starts at minus one, we're gonna change it to two. Two, make it minus one. This one was one, we'll make it minus one. So we're making these frames uh, rotate and we're creating these keyframes that are very subtle because we're going to add the wiggler to our rotation. So if we go to window and go to wiggler, open up that panel, we're gonna change our noise type to jagged and change the frequency to like 13 maybe. And make sure that our Z rotation keyframes are selected. Um, if you go into like frame one and just click on Z rotation. It will select our keyframes here and click apply in the wiggler. And now you can see that the wiggler has created a whole bunch of keyframes. And this is because the wiggler uh, took our two original keyframes and then it, depending on the frequency and the magnitude, is going to create these randomized values and then create keyframes for those values. So that way it looks like it's, you know, jiggling a little bit. So if we just solo that layer, you can, you can see how it's wiggling a little. And we want to do that for all of our frames. So we'll repeat that with frame two. We'll just click on Z rotation, make sure both of our keyframes are selected. And then go to the wiggler and we're going to keep all of our uh, properties the same, our options and click apply. Then go to frame three, select a Z rotation, and do the same thing. So now if we place back, you'll see our frames are wiggling in the background. And we want to do the same for our other uh, layers as well. So we'll go to frame one, hit R on your keyboard, create a, click on the stopwatch to create a keyframe on the Z rotation for frame one. And we'll just make this uh, minus two. 
move up to about six seconds and make this just one. And then again, make sure both of your keyframes are selected. Let's go back to the wiggler and click apply. Then we want to do the same thing for uh, frame two and three. Let's hit U on our keyboard to bring up our keyframes. If you remember, our Z rotation does change. So if we were to create a keyframe here at zero and then another one at six, like we did for our other layers, the wiggler would create keyframes in between these two keyframes that would just look really crazy. We want to change this from to let's make it two. Select these two keyframes, apply the wiggle. So let's repeat that for frame three. Let's create a keyframe at zero. We'll just say one for the rotation. Select our keyframes, apply the wiggle. So we're going to apply the wiggle again after we move those frames back into the stack. And we do want to fix this because I kind of messed this up here. Um, frame three needs to be on the right and frame two needs to be on the left. So we're going to make sure that our current time indicator is directly on our position keyframe. So let's select three. We're going to move this guy over here. I'm going to select frame two and move it over here. And then we're going to change those rotations so they're Here we go. So those guys are going to stay there for a little bit. And then we want those frames to move back into our stacks. We'll just uh, click on these diamonds here to add keyframes for our position and rotation for frame two and three. So let's move these keyframes down to about maybe four seconds. And let's move our current time indicator down here. Then we'll select frame two and move it back into our stack and change our rotation back to zero. Move frame three back into the stack and your rotation back to zero. So we want our frame two and three to wiggle for its rotation to wiggle while it's sort of fanned out. So we're going to select these keyframes right here and then apply the wiggler. Do the same for frame two or frame three. And now let's preview this. All right, there we go. Okay, so we got our basic animation going. So the next thing we're going to do to add even more movement to this animation is we're going to create a new null object. We're going to make it 3D. Let's parent our camera to our null layer and hit P on your keyboard to bring up the properties for the position and Alt Option, click our stopwatch to create a, an expression. We're going to make it wiggle three, 15. So we'll take a look and see what that looks like. Here we go. I think it's a bit much, so we're going to bring this down to like five. All right. I think that looks all right. So the next thing we're going to do is we want to add a vignette and an adjustment layer with an exposure a uh, wiggle on it this basically the same adjustment layers that we have on each frame so if we go into our one of any of our frame layers we're going to select our adjustment layers we're going to copy and paste them here and you can see they are obviously not the right size so uh, if we have one of our adjustment layers selected go to layer solid settings and we're going to click the make comp size button there we go, and you can see it's not centered. So we're going to go to transform and we're gonna click this reset button here. We're gonna do the same for our uh, exposure adjustment layer. Layer, solid settings, make comp size. Reset. I think this vignette is a little too big, so we're going to adjust the mask by uh, dragging on these vertex points. We're just going to adjust those a little. We might want to go into the mask properties and feather that a little bit more and also um, expand that. There we go. Makes it look a little bit more natural and not as harsh. Now you're probably thinking, well, this looks sort of stop motion-y, I guess, but we are missing one last step, which is to pre-comp our final comp. 
So we're going to select our final comp and drag it to our little composition button. And now it is a layer inside a new composition. And we're going to go to our effects and presets and we're going to apply the posterize time effect to that layer. And we're going to change our frame rate way down. Oh, let's try nine and see what that looks like. All right, so that's basically it. Hopefully you learned something new and we can uh, keep learning together. I hope you have a good rest of your day and thanks for watching.